has lost you. And that's why he came to die for you. He came to die for unlovable men. Demonstrate his love for unlovable men. So, whatever you are facing, any challenges, Jesus promised you a healing. Jesus promised you a deliverance. It is sin against God. Also, abomination. Have an affair with your own, your, your, your fellow brother, or have an affair with your fellow sister, gay or lesbian. It's not abomination, it's abomination. There were sins over there, homosexuality over there, there was gayism. There was lesbianism. There were a lot of sins happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. God sent angels to talk to them. They refused. And at the end, the Lord sent fire. The Lord sent fire to destroy. We zijn in Accra, in de hoofdstad van Ghana, op de marktplaats voor priesters en predikanten. Hier staan overal de handelaren in het woord van God. Maar het blijft hier niet alleen bij woorden. Ghana staat op het punt om een van de strengste wetten ter wereld aan te nemen. Die homoseksualiteit en transgender zwaar wil bestraffen, zelfs sympathie daarvoor. En daarmee is dit land aan het front komen te liggen van een cultuuroorlog. En ik wil begrijpen wie er in die strijd aan het touwtje strijdt. So there is a seat of grace where we repent from our wicked ways. Zo moet de eerste aanblik van de Europeanen zijn geweest toen ze hier aan wal gingen. Ook al noemden de Portugezen, de Hollanders en de Britten dit de goudkust, ze kwamen vooral voor slaven. Eeuwenlang was Ghana voor opeenvolgende zeemachten het centraal station voor de transatlantische mensenhandel. Maar wel met de hand op de Bijbel. Ik vind het heel indrukwekkend punt om even bij stil te staan. De haven van Accra was natuurlijk de plek waar eeuwenlang de slaven de oceaan werden overgevaren. Naar de Amerika's, door de Hollanders, door de Denen, door de Britten. De slaven zijn verdwenen, de slavenhandelaren zijn natuurlijk verdwenen. En uiteindelijk is alles de overblijft hier. Wat ik zie, extreme armoede, vervuiling en de kerken, de missionarissen en het woord van God. Maybe we can fetch water for Brother Mingle. I really hope that we can fetch water. <laughs> I really hope that we can. That would be fun. That'd be really fun. Because that would show like what it's actually like, right? Yeah. Because that's like all we do. That's what we usually do. Missionarissen zijn nog volop actief in Ghana. Dit zijn twee dieners van de Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, Mormonen, gestuurd vanuit het hoofdkwartier in Utah. <laughs> We're from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yes, please. Would you like to read this for us? Right here in that thing. Only verse 7. Mm -hmm. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but the re uh, revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Right now, we are further from God's presence. Right? We, don't, we don't see him with our own eyes every day. But he continues to guide and direct us. Sure. Guide us with the direction that God has for us. But it's like they, we're not listening. The, uh, yeah, the they, humans... They, they refuse to listen to God. Yeah. Is it making sense? Sure. Sense all right. Cool. Do you have any questions about this? Oh, no questions. No problem. No questions. Why didn't you come all the way to Ghana? For me, it's hope. Hope? Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a unique message, I like to say. Um, 
we believe that the Church of Jesus Christ has truly been restored. And you never got a question from Ghanaians like, what are you guys doing here? I've, I've gotten it sometimes. Uh, some people obviously are like, hey, white man, get out of here. Oh, yeah. But it's definitely not all of Ghana. Most of Ghana is very loving. It's a calling as, as a missionary. Right, because I imagine that most of guys from your age, I guess that you're in your early 20s, yep. are busy doing other stuff, right? There are a lot of good examples in my life, parents and, and family, who have, who have told me about their experience as missionaries. Right. The things they've learned. And is that important for you, family? Yeah, super important. Yeah? Um, we believe that the family is central to God's plan for the happiness of his children. Um, I have a mother and a father. I'm the oldest of five kids. So it was husband and wife and the kids. Yeah. So, and now what, what if you would be different? Like, for example, in my country, uh, men can get married with each other, men and men, mm -hmm. woman and woman. Mm -hmm. how, how do you look at that? Mm -hmm. For us, we believe that families are ordained of God. We believe that it should be with one man and one woman. Right. And what if you would be very unhappy because you prefer a man? For us, having that attraction is not the sin. It is acting upon that. What we believe and what we know is that families are ordained of God right. between one man and one woman. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know. Like, popping on the apricot <laughs> Dude, I'm so happy. For yeah. Are you feeling better today? Yeah. Yeah. Voor de missionarissen is Ghana een dankbare plek waar ze nog steeds gehoord worden. Nergens ter wereld groeien het christendom en conservatieve ideeën zo snel als hier in Afrika. Dat merk je ook in de politiek. Na Oeganda staan ook in democratisch Ghana parlementariërs op het punt een van de strengste anti-homo-wetten ter wereld aan te nemen. De wet eist niet alleen celstraf voor iedere Ghanees die zich identificeert als homo, transgender of queer, maar wil ook tien jaar gevangenis voor iedereen die ze steunt. Ik ben benieuwd naar de bedenkers van deze wet en voeg me bij de parlementaire pers. De manier van debatteren hier is nog steeds heel erg Brit. Met hier de regeringspartij en daar de oppositie. En daar zitten ook de bedenkers van die hele strenge anti homo wet Dit is Sam George, de man die namens de oppositie al twee jaar lang fanatiek lobbyt voor het wetsvoorstel. Een man met grote politieke ambities. Ze noemen hem wel de Lion. Voor mij is het waar ik het meest op peace ben als ik Ja. Lion is de lion is meest op mijn hoofd in de jungle. <laughs> College people are calling and saying, I'm with you. I hear that they say I'm not with you, just assuring you that they'll vote for you. Uh, winning is not a problem, it's just the amount of work and the amount of money that you have to spend because this is seen like uh, a time for people to milk politicians. You're known around the world for the LGBTQ bill. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, but, a... but you see, the, the thing about the LGBTQ thing is this. There is, no, there is no obsession with what people do. I don't care what you do in the privacy of your bedroom. It's not my business. But what I care about is when you bring out of your bedroom your personal choices and want to shove them down my throat and want to make them the norm and want to socialize my children 
they're asking for rights to be recognized. They're talking about rights against discrimination. They are, they're asking for rights to have marriages and all kinds of things, like regular heterosexual couples. But, but just the, the, the right the right to, to exist is, a, is pretty normal, right? Well, well, armed robbers have the right to exist. Rapists have the right to exist. Yeah, but then you're but comparing rapists and robbers, armed robbers with I'm comparing, sexual I'm, I, I am comparing criminal offenses. Being a rapist mm. is a personal choice. The people who decide that they get a high of of, but then, of you're vi but then you're violating somebody else. If 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 you say I'm gay, that's just the, that's identity, right? It's like it's not identity. It's like there, me saying I'm a white guy is not really my choice. So, like, that's so, what I am. So 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 how would you consider me if I described myself as a 16-year-old Belgian woman? <laughs> if you want to do that. That's you madness. Want, if you want it's, to... it's plain. You should you should you should you should get me checked out. <laughs> I mean I mean because that's that's that, there's nothing different from a man, grown man, biological man, waking up one day and saying he feels like he's a woman. It's <laughs> Sam George is echt in zijn element. Bedoel, dit is zijn achterban waar hij van afhankelijk is om herkozen te worden. En als je hier de reacties ziet, is hij behoorlijk populair. Hij bespeelt de menigte als een echte populist. 2024 Sam George presenteert zich als de man van het gewone volk die Ghana beschermt tegen westerse invloeden. Alsof homoseksualiteit een importproduct is dat je bij de grens kunt stoppen. We we are we're different from Europe. Because for us in Africa, yeah. the notion of family is father, mother and kids. And father, mother are biological male and female. Alles wat daarvan afwijkt is dus on-Afrikaans, zegt Sam George. Op dat moment rijden we ons vast in een traditionele begrafenisprocessie, waar de mannen opmerkelijk zijn uitgedost. So there's going to be a funeral of a very popular traditional uh, priest. But they dress like women. I mean, they're, they're basically just dressing for the event. It's, but they look like women, right? Nobody has a problem with cross dresses. The guys who've just put on a woman's wig, that's all they've done. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> they, it doesn't mean that they're identifying as, as transgender or anything. Absolutely not. So do you know anyone who's gay or lesbian? Oh, I, I have. People I know, I have acquaintances who in their closet. But when you choose to make it a public conversation, a, a situation of advocacy, then everybody's going to have a say in it. It was the opening of an advocacy office. Oh, what's that? Yes. Ah, the LGBTQ community opened what they called an advocacy office that had one goal, to push for the acceptance of homosexuality as a norm in Ghana. De opening van het allereerste LHBTQ-huis twee jaar geleden werd bijgewoond door westerse diplomaten en leidde tot grote verontwaardiging in Ghana, een politieinval en gedwongen sluiting. Kort daarop werd het voorstel voor de strenge anti-homo-wet ingediend, die Ghanese onder meer verplicht homo's bij de politie aan te geven. De gemeenschap durft nu alleen nog in het diepste geheim bij elkaar te komen. If we are not able to go there and debunk it, then they'll keep telling the people we are evil. If we can have the courage to stand them, we can win this battle. But if we continue hiding, then sorry, we will do this work forever and we'll all go to prison. Because there's somebody sponsoring hate and people are enjoying the hate because that is what they've been fed with. And who is Ever since the introduction of 
the bill, I have to be careful of my friends, my neighborhood, because I'm living in a society which I assume everyone is an hetero. Another incident which happened to me was about one guy. He, he was so nice, did me good, and thought I have met my angel. Mm. We communicated for long. To my demise, on his invite, it was a prank. Over 20 boys, an area boy. That, that was a gang something. He really planned that day, and like, they beat me up mercilessly. There were some stores which were open. I was running to for help. The store person was also pushing me out to them because I am odd, I'm evil, I'm demonic, what I'm doing, like, I just can't. <laughs> it's coming trauma sometimes when I speak about it, but it was hell for me. Does so, this happen a lot, these kind of beatings? So this is like... It's rampant, yeah. honestly, it's rampant in Ghana. So who's this? So there's one guy from the Ashanti region in Kumase. I think he was pranked by a friend and lured him into the room. So they have knives and, and spray. They are trying to spray, um, put the spray in the boy's eye to correct him. They want to correct him as a gay person. To clean him. To basically. clean him. Who are they? They say they are soldiers of Christ. Soldiers of this Christ. This one in this video, they are saying they are soldiers of Christ who claim or believe in the Bible. Sinds het wetsvoorstel is het geweld tegen de gemeenschap exponentieel gestegen. Zelfs het nemen van openbare taxibusjes als deze is nu levensgevaarlijk geworden. So, I have been assaulted in a public bus before. Everyone jumps on. A bus like this. Yeah, bus like this, and everyone joins into it. I was assaulted because someone felt I spoke and he asked, or he thinks I speak like a woman or a lady. So in he querying me, why do I speak like a woman? It became an argument and he had to hit me. So I had a crack. I, I can't be saved when this bail is passed because the bail in its core criminalizes identity and I am a visibly effeminate person. So obviously I will be walking on the street and someone can point at, oh, I perceive this person is a gay person and then they can rally me to the police station or whatever the bill make provisions for will happen to me. Yeah. And the bill make provision for imprisonment up to about five years. Where, where would you say that the trouble in Ghana really started for your community? Um, the past five years, um, there has been a tremendous attack on the LGBTQ plus community. Their interpretation is that it is um, immoral based on their religious um, so opinions. So what has changed? Ghana has been religious for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, this is nothing new. It is because there is a different dimension of the religious groups, which is um, the Pentecostals. And we've realized that the Pentecostals are very violent in their engagements, especially the Christian religious extremists from ones that we know are from the US, from Russia, from Europe, from Brazil, that are mobilizing across the African continent. We know that um, Sam George, who is now the leading proponent of the anti-LGBT bill currently in Parliament, mm -hmm. has a long-standing engagement with the, the, the World Congress of Family. And we also know that the, um, in the past three months, he was in US for a similar conference. And so we know that one way or the other, they are tied together in all this that is happening. All of us here today, we are the solution to solve homosexuality. Same-sex coupling cohabitation are more closely bound to sickness, domestic violence, financial stress, depression, premature death.
Amerikaanse religieuze groeperingen gaven in de afgelopen jaren tientallen miljoenen dollars uit aan het paaien van Afrikaanse politici op congressen. Het is een groot honor voor ons team om hier te zijn en Family Watch te sponsoren. De fanatiekste lobbyist is Sharon Slater van Family Watch International, die in 2019 ook Ghana bezocht om te ageren tegen homorechten, abortus en seksuele voorlichting. In Ghana, you have um, Sweden, who has announced millions of dollars to push comprehensive sexual education here in Uganda. I'm sorry, here in, in Ghana. Ghana. I meant to say Ghana. In Ghana, but they're also doing it in other countries as well. Mm -hmm. You have the Netherlands. They have the World Starts With Me program here in Ghana, and that has all the problems that we're talking about. It, it tells children they can decide to lose their virginity or not, and about anal and oral sex. Those are the kind of things that these Western governments, they're trying to sexualize the culture. Sharon Slater refereert hier aan standaard seksuele voorlichting aan tieners. Maar in deze cultuuroorlog geeft iedereen daar zijn eigen draai aan. They're teaching four-year-olds how to masturbate. They're, they're, they're teaching four-year-olds to accept being gay as natural and asking them to explore with other boys, boys exploring other boys, girls exploring other girls. European money and American money is funding the LGBTQ movement here. Now I heard you were in, in Utah last year. Yes, I was in Utah. I met what were you family, doing there? I met with Family Watch International. They had the Family conference. Watch International? Yes. But I mean, they are pushing very hard against LGBTQ. Yes, in the US, in Utah. So what were you doing there? I attended a conference that they sponsored. It wasn't secret. I put it on my Facebook page. Where, why were you there? What were you looking for? It was a conference of like-minded people from across the African continent. There were MPs from Kenya, MPs from Uganda, MPs from Tanzania, from, Zim from Zambu Zambia and Zimbabwe. And so my bill was put before them. And there was that cross-pollination of ideas. And so... And what did they say? Oh, they thought it was a good bill. But they, advi they gave us legal, te technical legal advice from other MPs wow. and from uh, Sharon Slater, who's the head of the Family Watch International. Right, a Mormon. Yeah. yeah, she's a Mormon, you know. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're experts in this field. They've, they've seen and supported several other bills. They know what works in, in, those, in those other regimes. And so for me, it was best practice, going to learn from them. Internationale krachten beuken in op de LHBTQ-gemeenschap in Ghana. En hun enige antwoord is YouTube-hit Angel Maxime. This is my safe space. Right here. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is where all the bad things come from. This is where all the songs come from. Yeah. And are they listening? They will listen. We are Ghanaians. And we have every right as a Ghanaian, every right as a human being to live, to exist, to feel free and be yourself, be who you are. <laughs> a child she behaves like a girl you know you see her wearing <laughs> sometimes my dress will be wearing it she was wearing it she was so interested in ladies you know women stuff from and age from even from childhood mm. i took her to churches to pray so that they can cast they said it's demonic oh. and so if, to pray to so to, that to they get should cast the demon out of my daughter Wow. So that I get a son, as they wish. 
Were you hurt by that? I mean, that's quite something you're saying that you you were going to church to get the demon out of her. I wasn't hurt. I love my daughter. Mm. I love her just any, I mean, just the way she is. Yeah. Whether she's a boy or she's a girl, I love her. Yeah. I'm a religious person. I, they made me fast 40 days. Ask her. 150 days to cast the demon. The demon did not go. If she truly has a demon, the demon's supposed to leave. People trust in religious leaders. People believe in the religious leaders. If a pastor tells somebody to sleep, they will sleep. So if the pastor tells somebody, this person is evil, don't go close to them, they won't come close to you. They will hate you. And the pastor's duty is to preach love. The pastor's duty is to preach acceptance, the love you one another. Bring you, the pastor doesn't have a choice to say this is a sinner and that is why you are a pastor. Your role as a religious leader is to save the so-called sinners. Zondagochtend 9 uur. Parlementariër Sam George meldt zich bij de Paris Chapel International. Een van de rijkste pinkstergemeentes in West-Afrika. Hier wordt iedere zondag het welvaartsgospel gepredikt. Aartsbisschops Charles Arginiasare is multimiljonair. En het is niet heel moeilijk om te begrijpen hoe hij dat voor elkaar kreeg. For those of us who would like to pay digitally like I always do, you can also give through our mobile money numbers. Dit is religie 2.0, de verbroedering van God, geld en politiek. May God cause his face to shine. So I see that you have a very famous parliamentarian amongst your followers. Yeah. Yeah, Sam George. Yeah. yeah is he uh, is he important for you that he that he's here? Yes, 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 very important. Why is that? Yes. Oh, well, he grew up in the church, and um, God being so good, he's very vocal, and he's a man of principles. I mean, he has introduced a bill that yes. uh, is criminalizing gay, transgender, queer. Well, what do you think of this as a yes. man of God? Yes, the scripture tells us that that is the normal thing to do. Um, well, what does it say? The scripture tells us that those who practice gay, uh, they, 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 they've taken something that is unnatural. It's an unnatural act. Uh -huh. you know, so we, 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 we support him. We are fully behind him. He's one of my biggest critics and one of my biggest cheerleaders. He's, he's one of the few people in this country who is able to call me up and say, I listen to you on TV, I listen to you on radio, and I disagree with what you said. This is wrong. Next time, don't do it right. Don't do it this way. And when I get it right, he also calls me and says, so for me, it is that kind of candid feedback. Recently, I was part of the eminent clergy yeah. that went to see the speaker in yeah. parliament and said, we are waiting for the bill. Yeah. The whole church. Yeah. And it was made up of... The, uh, uh, a cross-section of the leadership of the church yeah. as a whole. As a result of the bill being tabled, as a result of what was being said at church, the violence against gay people is increasing quite no. tremendously. No, no, no. no. A, well, in, Ghana, a, oh, in, in Ghana, there's been no, that we don't have any violence against gay people. I hear the people. contrary. No, no, you hear the contrary, but I, I mean what do you what, what do you condone it for such violence? No, absolutely not. Well, I saw a video of a gay man that was threatened, beaten up with machetes and all of that. And the guys who were doing that called themselves soldiers of God. Oh, in Ghana, in Ghana here. here. In Ghana oh, here. No, no. Because we don't I mean, have, staged... we don't know any group known as soldiers of God. Well, they that. call themselves like that because they feel probably that they are supported by children. Nobody has, nobody has gone to the police station to make any report. Oh, they make them up? They make them up. They want, they want a visa. And, yeah. and, and, and like, yeah. I, like, I, like I pointed out to you, homosexuals are safer in Ghana. Than illegal, migrants, than illegal migrants are in Europe. 
and then school children are in the United States because of gun violence. Bishop, the Archbishop has to go back into okay. the vestry. Thank you. Politiek en geloof gaan hier hand in hand als onafscheidelijke broeders. Nergens zie je dat beter als in het hart van de hoofdstad, waar op last van de president voor 400 miljoen euro een kathedraal wordt gebouwd. De bouw ligt al maanden stil omdat Ghana er failliet aan dreigt te gaan. Ik denk dat we onze kans maken dat, als we ons concentreren, we hebben niet genoeg om voor onze werkers te betalen, maar we nemen interesse in het bouwen van een kathedraal. We zijn niet in support van dat. We willen onze economische conditions te verbeteren en te verbeteren. Kater voor mij eerst, voordat alle andere dingen zijn gegeven. Want als ik honger heb en je een kathedraal bouwt, wat ga ik doen in een kathedraal? Oké, geen kathedraal. Eerst eten voor de arbeiders. Maar ik ben benieuwd of de vakbonden voor meer staan dan dat. En wat denk je over de bill tegen de LGBTQ? We willen niet legaliseren van de LGBTQ in Ghana. Dus je steunt de bill? Dus ik steun de bill en het moet naar me gaan. Oké. Interessant. Dus wel rechten voor de werkers, maar niet voor iedereen. We are coming to you live from the Independence Square. And today is a May Day celebration where we celebrate... We talk about things that concerns the people and what is concerning the majority of the people. Okay. It's the economy. Right. You know, so if it becomes a topic of concern, then it will become a necessity for us to talk right. about. But for now, the need is to talk about the economy. Do you feel that me being an international journalist coming to Ghana with this issue, because I, I read about it, maybe I'm more concerned about yeah, it are. than Ghanaian than journalists? Yeah. I am? Yeah, you are. How come? Because it's a big issue of where you're coming from. We care about money. We care about living comfortable. We care about survival. You care about the LGBTQ bill. Die zit. De journalisten en ook de vakbondsleider vinden dus allebei dat mijn vragen over de anti-homo-wet gewoon een typisch Europese obsessie zijn. Als je er niet op let, dan is het er ook niet. Maar intussen staat de gemeenschap van Angel Maxine met de rug tegen de muur. Een queer person is born every day. En dat is wat ze moeten begrijpen. Deze girl. Out of, she opened my eyes. Honestly, my daughter opened my eyes. Yes, she, you know, I sat down, I studied her, I studied a lot of things, I realized, oh. And God told me she created her in his own image and also he loves her. Do you still see a future for yourself in Ghana? If it becomes very dangerous, I have to protect myself. I have to save my life. You're also I'm an advocate. A, I'm also an advocate and an uh, ally. So me too, so I'm you going could... to jail. I can also go to jail. So you have plans to leave? I will leave for my safety, not because I am afraid. I am not afraid. Hmm. It's for my safety to continue to tell them that we exist. Het gevecht tussen conservatieve en progressieve krachten lijkt vaak maar een woordenstrijd. Maar Ghana leert dat als woorden wetten worden, echte levens in gevaar komen. True, true.